virtual reality was supposed to change everything. The new internet, a new way to live, work, play, and even socialize. Kind of like the next iPhone. And yet, here we are in 2025, and it seems like the general public has still not caught up to it how we thought it would. So, what's the holdup? Why hasn't VR become the mainstream technology that it promised to be? On Immersive Insiders, we explore immersive tech and XR design so we can create the future. In order to do that though, we need to understand what's holding us back. Let's break down the real reasons VR hasn't taken off yet and the few changes it needs to make that finally happen. Over the past decade, the hype around VR was massive. I actually love this thing. This is the Vision Pro. This is the new MetaQuest 3S. Every year we hear that this is the year that VR breaks through. But beyond the headlines and headset launches, adoption has been kind of slow. So what's the core issue? It's not just one problem. It's a mix of friction points, most of which can be fixed, and some of which have already improved a lot. For all the innovation over the years, VR is still kind of bulky, awkward, and intimidating to some. Even with the lighter models like Quest 3 and more recently the Quest 3S, wearing something on your head, on your face for stretches of time is not ideal. A lot of people would say that if VR headsets don't become as comfortable as wearing glasses or earbuds, that this technology won't catch on. I would kind of disagree. It does need to improve, but we already see that a lot of the younger generation is using it for stretches of time and comfortably because of more malleability, more time to adjust to it and starting with it from a young age allows you to even become a pro at it and build your VR legs like we talked about last time. So while comfort is one of the main points, I don't think we're too far away from finally getting to the sweet spot where most people will start wearing it. Beyond comfort, the process of actually getting into VR is still a chore. You need to have a space, you need some time, you need to charge the headset and take the time to update it, set it up and all of that. It's not as simple as some of the other technology that we use every day, like a phone for example. While this onboarding process might be fine for enthusiasts, for the general public, it's something that actually deters you quite a bit from continuing to use or to even start using a certain product. And this is quite relevant to virtual reality. This entry barrier is definitely something that needs to be lowered a bit and we see experiences that are going towards that direction with, for example, tutorials when you open the quest that help you with setting up everything and explain to you all the mechanics. This is helpful and it goes in the right way, but it still has some way to go. Now here's the next big one. VR has amazing experiences, but not enough of them. Outside of a few big hits like Beat Saber and VR Chat, there's a lack of content that pulls people in and keeps them coming back. And don't get me wrong, it's not a failure on the creativity part. It's more like a symptom of VR not hitting critical mass yet. And as you see, it's kind of like a loop here. If there aren't enough experiences, people won't start using VR. And if there aren't enough people using VR, there won't be enough experiences. So this is kind of a tricky part, but I think that we're already on a good trajectory towards having more games, more experiences that are open for the mass. And this is something that, for example, Meta has been recently opening up to by allowing a lot of users to put their apps on the Quest without as much restriction as before. And starting today, our open store, it fully welcomes 2D and spatial apps. But with more dev-friendly tools and cross-platform support, we're starting to see signs of more meaningful experiences on the horizon. And that's foreshadowing something I'll talk about in a bit. Nice. Remember what I said about VR being social? While it is a very social platform and it allows you to connect with people from all over the world, close distances and feel even closer to your loved ones. It is still an experience that can feel isolating, but we are seeing many advancements specifically on that point. One of which is of course the fact that a lot of more experiences are being co-op and multiplayer and social like that, but also with features that improve immersiveness like MR, which allows you to see the world around you. So mixed reality, you see the world around you, but you also see the content that you're experiencing and features like what, for example, the Apple Vision Pro did with uh, FaceTime and having your avatar sit next to you. So these kind of advancements allow us to feel more connected and close this gap a bit. And one thing that I want to mention quickly is that previously motion sickness was a huge deal that deterred people from trying more virtual reality for going into this experience and trying this deck out. 
but I do believe that nowadays with the new technology, the new design principles that everyone is learning, for example, on Immersive Insiders, and much more updates and features that are coming into place, like mixed reality as well, this motion sickness problem is kind of disappearing. So that's a good thing. And this brings me exactly to the shift that's happening. Headsets are becoming lighter, MR pass-through is improving, and input systems are becoming more intuitive than ever, sometimes ditching controllers completely. Like for example, the new micro gestures feature that Meta announced, which we covered in a previous video. You can check it out here. But most importantly, creators are starting to understand how to design for presence and not just for gimmicks. And this shift is opening doors to more meaningful, practical, and emotionally resonant experiences that slowly fill out the VR market. One example of this shift is Meta Horizon Worlds. While it's been memed and even mocked in the past, Horizon World has now evolved into a platform that empowers creators to build build, share, and even monetize their creations. It's far from perfect, but it's one of the clearest attempts at building a true social layer in VR, like the metaverse that we all imagine, with portals connecting all of the world together. By the way, this is an app that we're currently exploring a lot at Immersive Insiders, so let us know if you want us to create videos about it. So as the tools improve and the onboarding gets easier, these kinds of platforms could finally deliver on the promise of a connected, living metaverse. So no, VR isn't dead, but it's also not where we thought it would be. The good news is that most of what is holding it back can be fixed and is on the way of improving. Things with virtual reality don't need to change overnight, but it needs to improve slowly and gradually in the basic. And that's something it's already doing. So by lowering the friction, building stronger content, and by making it social, we might just be able to make that breakthrough happen sooner than later. Until then, the future of VR is still in the hands of developers, designers, and early adopters like us. If you're one of them, stick around and don't forget to subscribe for everything XR and more. Let me know in the comments what you think is holding VR back, and I'll see you next time.